be seated. So good to have each and every one of you here. Good morning. He is risen. He is risen indeed. He is risen indeed. So glad that you are all here. We want to give a special welcome to all of those who were watching us online this morning as we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We are so glad you are all here. Hey, if you are visiting with us today, in the pews in front of you, you'll find these blue connection cards. So we would ask that you would please fill that out. And then all you have to do is drop it into the offering basket as it comes by a little bit later. There's also a place on the back if you would like us to pray for you. Uh, just fill that out and again, drop it in the offering basket and we'll be happy and honored to do that for you. Hey, every Sunday of the first Sunday of the month, we always have an unbelievable breakfast. And this breakfast, has, it includes everything from eggs and bacon and, and uh, sausage and hash browns and pastries. It is truly amazing. And this is going to happen next Next Sunday. So if you are here, please stay after breakfast. Everyone is welcome to attend. We all go back into the fellowship hall and share some wonderful fellowship around those tables as well as have a wonderful breakfast. We will also be collecting our food or the pantry items for from Flat River Outreach Ministry, which is one of the ministries we support. So please bring those pantry items as well. The other next thing is on April 24th, we want you to save the date. We are going to be offering uh, something from the Kent County Sheriff's Office. Officer Dieppe is going to be here to talk about all of the different scams. And my go goodness, they just seem to be so many these days hitting our, tele our cell phones and hitting our emails. Everybody is being caught up in these scams these days. And so he's going to show us what to avoid and how not to get caught up into those scams. Some of you, if you members of the church, if you you're on my email list, you got something from me this week, supposedly from me, asking for gift cards. That will never happen, all right? So please don't fall for that. You don't have to bring me a gift card. Um, so anyway, please save that date for Officer Dieppe. That's going to be on April 24th at 6 p.m. Entrance to get in will be a gift card. <clears throat> Just kidding, just kidding. Hey, on April 14th, I'm beginning a brand new series of messages called The Baggage That We Carry. And how does all of this baggage that we carry, how does it affect us throughout our lives? And, and how can we get rid of it once and for all? So let me show you this real quick video to introduce that. That's going to be on April 14th. We hope that you'll join us for that. Also, on the 14th, our youth groups are going to be meeting once again. They meet in the core, which is in the lower level of the church. Miss Ash would love to see all the kids come back for that. Hey, we've been talking about this Make Your Own Pizza and Game Night. It has been rescheduled into Make Your Own Pizza and Game Day. It's going to be right after church, and you can, we'll go into the fellowship hall, so save the date for that. It's going to be on April 21 for that. Lastly, we are so excited to welcome Mr. Larry Beiser on the organ today. FHPC, welcome to all of you. So with that, let's put him to work. Let's all stand together as we sing our opening hymn medley together.
And how wonderful to have that part in our system. Good morning. Thank you so much. Um, just the FHPC kids, we're going to dismiss you actually after um, the offering this morning. So just sit tight for a little bit. Our first reading comes from the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 15, verses 1 through 8. Now, brothers and sisters, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received and on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel you are saved if you hold firmly to the word I preached to you. Otherwise, you have believed in vain. For what I received I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas and then to the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers and sisters at the same time, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, and last of all, he appeared to me also as to one abnormally born. This is God's word for us today. Please remain seated as we continue our worship with this song.
second script. Yeah. <laughs> Our second scripture reading comes from the book of John, chapter 20, verses 1 through 9. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. This is God's word for us today. One of the ministries we are so proud of here at Forest Hills is our mission. We say that we are Christ-centered, people-focused, and mission-driven, and we believe that. We support mission trips, international missions like Compassion International, giving children hope and health, and we support many local missions like the Kids Food Basket and mobile food trucks to feed hurting communities here in Grand Rapids. We not only pay for the food trucks, but we serve at them as well. We support FROM, the Flat River Outreach Ministry, and many others. We couldn't do what we do without financial support from all of you. In just a few minutes, we will invite the ushers to come forward to receive the morning offering. You can give in the baskets as they go by, or you can easily and safely give by texting an amount to 84321 and type in your information. Whatever you give, please know the Lord will bless it. Let's pray over the offering that we will receive. Lord, you have blessed us beyond measure in so many ways. On my own, what I have to give doesn't amount to much in the light of all you have given to me and in the face of so much need in the world. Put together as a congregation, what we offer you here in love becomes more, not simply added together, but somehow multiplied in its usefulness. We ask you to bless our gifts, and with the addition of your blessing, just as it was with the loaves and fishes, there is enough for all. Amen.
Queen. <laughs> For those of you that don't know me, I am Ashley Atkins. I am the director of family ministries here at FHPC. And I have the joy of wearing a lot of hats here. But my main hat is working with the birth through 18-year-olds at this church. And this morning, I would love to take a minute to share with you what we are actually going to be talking about at FHPC Kids as I take all of the preschool through fifth graders downstairs today. And I'm guessing you can probably already know what we're going to be talking about, and that is March Madness, right? <laughs> Obviously, no? <laughs> <laughs> um, but on that note, I did legit send out an email about gift cards to the high school families. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. <laughs> so if you were a high school family, that was a legit email you got from me. <laughs> so please still bring gift cards for the March Madness fundraiser. <laughs> conflicting messages. Um, so this morning we actually are going to be talking about Easter. Uh, we're going to be talking about Jesus's death and resurrection, which is a really fancy word for that he came back to life. So and what all of that means for us as Christians. So I would love to invite all of my preschoolers through fifth graders, whether you've been coming to this church for your entire life or today is your first Sunday here, uh, you can join me as we walk walk out of the sanctuary together down to FHPC Kids. The next scripture reading comes from the book of Acts, chapter 10. Listen again for God's word. Then Peter began to speak. I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism, but accepts from every nation the one who fears him and does what is right. You know the message God sent to the people of Israel, announcing the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. You know what happened throughout the province of Judea, beginning in Galilee, after that baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, and how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil, because God was with him. We are witnesses of everything he did in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They killed him by hanging him on a cross. But God raised him from the dead on the third day and caused him to be seen. He was not seen by all the people, but by witnesses whom God had already chosen. By us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one whom God appointed as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. May God truly bless that reading to us again this morning.
the streets no longer rang. Hushed were the glad hosannas the little children sang. The sun grew dark with mystery. The morn was cold and chill as the shadow of a cross arose upon Thank you so very much. Wow, that was um, my mother's favorite Easter song, and God rest her soul. I know she listened to that, and we thank you, Wade and Diane, so much for that. Let's pray together, shall we? Loving and gracious God, thank you so much for the gift of this very special day, this gift that we call Easter, where we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior. And so, Lord, in the next couple of minutes, Father, I pray that you would bless the words that I speak. May the words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart, be acceptable to you this day. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, it, it, and listening to all that, it is truly amazing how sounds will stir the mind and the heart. For instance, music has such a marvelous way of, of igniting an array of emotions. Someone can listen to a song, close their eyes, and, and they can feel that, that maybe that exhilaration of their very first kiss, or maybe the bittersweet memory of a love that was lost. A note or two of music can resonate so deep within our souls. Movie makers know this and they use it to their advantage. Ever try to watch a movie with your television muted? 
doesn't work real well, does it? The drama of the movie is completely removed. The screech is the, the sound, the, the spine tingling sounds. They give the movie its impact. There are two notes of music made for a particular movie which probably has caused more fear and terror than any other two notes for any movie ever created for the big screen. They are the notes E followed by the note F. Listen to this. When they were first recorded for that score, the instrumentation was, was six cellos and three basses. Those two notes came from John Williams' score for the movie Jaws. When Williams was asked why he chose those two notes, he said, I was looking for something that would describe the shark to the listener in an unconscious way. Ooh. If you've seen the movie Jaws, you remember how, how primal and unstoppable that shark was. Perhaps after seeing the movie, you maybe thought twice about going into the ocean, as so many others did as well. Williams took two notes, sim two simple notes, and struck the, at the depths of people's emotions. In fact, I would venture to say that for most of us, those two notes translate into two words. No hope, no hope, no hope, no hope, no hope. So what are the sounds which evoke hopelessness within you? Maybe it's the sound of a, of a certain song that, that spurs a haunting memory. Maybe it's the sound of, of a door slamming shut, or the sound of a particular person's voice, or maybe the nurse's voice calling your name from the emergency room waiting area. Or maybe it's, maybe it's just the sound of silence reminding you of of your aloneness. Whatever your particular sound is, you know that when you hear it, it, is, it sounds like a shark coming after you with all of its primal and unstoppable power. And as it gets closer to you, instinctively, we think to ourselves, no hope, no hope, no hope. But you see, the tragedy is when we allow the shark's jaws around us, something within us, well, it begins to die. Have you ever felt the attack of hopelessness and lost your vitality? Have you ever been swallowed up in disappointment and can no longer see the light of a new tomorrow? Have you ever looked into the menacing eyes of, of depression and felt as if your spirit was locked away in a cold, damp, musty tomb? There is good news. There is good news. The good news is that there are two Easter words that ring true just like the A and the D notes in the Hallelujah Chorus. Those words, they ring so bright, so vibrant, so loud, and so strong that they drown out any E and F notes that are within us. Doesn't matter whether you are suffering from a debilitating disease or having depression or despair or, or even this nagging doubt because if the power of these two words come into you and fill your soul, your hopelessness will be overcome. What are those two words? He lives. He is risen. He lives. He lives. That is the meaning, the penetrating meaning of Easter, which Peter was commanded to proclaim in the 10th chapter of the book of Acts that I read a few moments ago. Peter was explaining to a man by the name of Cornelius and, and all others the revelation of the truth about Jesus Christ. 
Peter, and who was an eyewitness to the resurrection power of Jesus Christ, he was sharing his testimony in that scripture. And as he was preaching, the Holy Spirit fell upon all of those who were listening. I am not an eyewitness as Peter was. But I'm a witness nonetheless, and there is no other time that I am reminded of this in such a powerful way than on Easter Sunday. Because I, like Peter, have been commanded by my Lord to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. And my fervent prayer is that as I lift up this, this wonderful message of Easter, that God's Spirit will fall on all of us this day, and we too will come to experience God's amazing power of creating new life. Because today we celebrate the truth that what once was dead will be made alive again in Christ. Now, maybe you're wondering, is, is this really even possible? Maybe you are trying to crawl your way out of life's jarring jaws, and you really want to know if it's possible to experience the grace of the resurrection. Maybe you feel like your life has just been one funeral after another, one disappointment after another, one loss after another, and you desperately want to know if it is possible to experience a transformation of all the, the lifeless, hopeless parts of your life. Well, I'm here to tell you that yes, yes, it is possible. It is possible if you are willing to open up your deepest and darkest tombs and pray, Lord, here it is. Here it is, all of the junk, the pain, the despair, the depression that is decomposing within me, I turn it over to you. Take it, transform it, and breathe new life into me this day. You see, doing that, that's what the power of the resurrection is all about. And that's what it does for us. Pastor, I was pastor of my first church in Lake Geneva, Wisconsin, and I decided I was going to have a healing service. We invited the entire community to come to this. When I arrived at the, at the service, I had my anointing oil, I had my Bible, and I had the elements for communion. And as I sat there and I watched these people come into the sanctuary, they f looked like they were lost in, in despair and in darkness. So at the particular time of the service when we invited people to come forward to offer their prayer requests and to be prayed over, this woman came up and she told me that she's been struggling with depression for 10 years. And so I anointed her with oil and I prayed over her that God's light would pierce that darkness. The service ended, everybody went home. About a week after that, I was preparing for the next Sunday service. Suddenly this woman came into my office and she, I was sitting in my desk. She threw her arms around me, squeezing my neck. And when she finally let go, I could see there were tears streaming down her face. She said, Pastor, I haven't felt this way in 10 years. My life has been changed. I, I, am, I see no longer dark. I see the light. I see things in a new way, and I can't thank you enough. And I said, it wasn't me. It wasn't me. I, I didn't do anything. But what did happen? The resurrection occurred in her life. How do I know? You should have seen the radiance on her face. That's how I know. That's how I know. That's why we celebrate Easter. This is why the trumpet sounds. This is why the sanctuary is filled with all of these beautiful flowers. That is why we sing, Christ the Lord is risen today and Christ is risen. Shout Hosanna. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead raised us from the dead. The same power that gave Jesus life will give us life. The same power that breathed into Jesus' tomb will breathe, breathe into our term. tomb. How do I know that? There. Because he lives. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. 
Because he lives, all fear is gone, as the old hymn says. Tony Campolo is a, was a professor and one of my favorite writers. He was sharing in one of his books about his first African-American funeral that he attended. A friend of his named Clarence had died. Campolo said the pastor who led the service was incredible. He, he spoke about the resurrection in beautiful terms and terms that everybody in the congregation could understand. The whole congregation was uplifted and they were thrilled. Finally, he said, the pastor did something that he had never, ever seen before. Campolo said that the last 20 minutes of the service, the pastor came down from the pulpit and he preached to an open casket. A few minutes into the eulogy, the pastor began to yell at the corpse, Clarence, Clarence. Campolo said he yelled so loud he wouldn't have been surprised if Clarence sat right up and said, what? The pastor continued, he says, Clarence, there were a lot of things we should have said to you that we never said. You got away too fast, Clarence. You, you got away too fast. Then Campolo said the preacher began to recite this litany of, of beautiful things which Clarence had done for people throughout his life. He lifted up Clarence's enormous faith and how that faith influenced so many others. And then when he finished, he said, that's it, Clarence. There is nothing more. And when there is nothing more, there is only one thing left to say. Good night, Clarence. Good night. And with that, he took the lid of the casket and slammed it shut. The congregation was shocked. Then the preacher lifted his head slowly, and he turned to the congregation and he said, good night, Clarence, good night, because I know, I know that God is going to give you a good morning. Then he said the choir stood up and they all began to say, on that great getting up morning, fare thee well, fare thee well. And everybody was dancing and, and hugging and celebrating. My point is this. I believe that Easter gives us permission to dance in the face of death and say death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? For Christ has put everything under his feet and is judge of all things, both living and the dead. And as the judge, he has conquered our sin, he has overcome our despair, and he has defeated everything which is the enemy in our lives. How do I know? Because he lives. He lives. You see, we pray and God responds. Listen to how God responds. We say, Lord, they've ridiculed you and mocked you. And the Lord says, yes. Lord, they have driven nails into you and pierced your side. And the Lord says, yes. They have hung you on the cross and put you in a tomb. Yes. Is the tomb empty? Yes. Are you telling me that you're alive? Yes. Does this mean that you've conquered death and that I will conquer death? Yes. Does it mean that because you live, I will live? Yes. Are you telling me that you have the last word? And the Lord says, yes. Yes. And with that, there is nothing more to say. Amen? Amen. Let's, let's pray together. Lord, we thank you for bringing us all here this morning in your house. And Lord, we thank you for this awesome day, a day to celebrate the empty tomb. It's a fresh start. It's a new beginning. The resurrection of your son has given us new life and, and renewed hope. And we are so eternally grateful. Lord, help us to live as new people in, in pursuit of the Christian ideal, to love each other as you have loved us. Lord, this whole day is about love, discovering it and celebrating it.
cherishing it, and then sharing it. Lord, this morning we pray for those who are struggling in wars and rumors of wars, for the people in Israel and the Ukraine, Russia, Palestine, while we pray for peace. We pray for those struggling in poverty and abuse, for all of the missions that we support locally and around the world. We pray for comfort and healing. There are needs all around us, Lord, we know that. Grant us wisdom to know what we must do, the will to want to do it, the courage to undertake it and do it, the perseverance to continue to do it, and the strength to complete it. This is our prayer this Easter morning, Lord. We know that there are some among us here and those that we know and love that are in need of your healing presence in their lives as, as they struggle with illness or sadness or loneliness. We know there are those who are struggling as this holiday without their loved one may be for the first time. Father, whatever it is, we ask that you surround those in need with your love and your healing presence and a peace that passes all understanding. And above all, bring wholeness to their lives. Hear us now, O oh God, as we pray together as one body. We pray the prayer that Jesus taught us all to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let's close our service today by singing one of my favorite hymns, Lift High the Cross. Let's stand together.
in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen.